Hello there. In this tutorial, we'll be customizing our main menu for our mod. This will be covering how to change some of the labeling of items on the main menu. Uh, we're going to be removing the achievement option. We are going to be replacing the current font for the main title. And we're going to be changing the background image. So let's start off. From last time, all I've changed is I've renamed the mod to Counter Operations, both the folder and in the game info.txt, just so we have something to uh, work towards. All right, so first thing we need to do is go to Resources, Game Menu.res. And this lists out everything that can display on the main menu. So as you can see, it's got some options underneath the labeling of the command. The label basically refers to a different text file that will tell it how to name it. We don't put the name, the actual name right here because if we want to be able to use um, different language settings such as like Spanish or French, the game can actually pull in the correct um, naming from our text files. The command is what command is ran when the player clicks on that item. So in this case, this will open up the new game dialog. This one resumes the game. Only in game means it will only show up on the main menu once the player is in game. So resume game doesn't show up on the main menu unless they've been playing the game so that you can click resume game once they hit the pause button. Not multi means do not display this in a multiplayer game, but we're a single player so this doesn't really matter to us. Only when VR enabled, only when VR inactive, that's pretty self-explanatory. Console only, only show this if it's being ran on a console like an Xbox or a PlayStation. In-game order refers to the stacking order of items once the player is in-game. This way resume is at the top, quit is at the bottom. So to start, we are going to get rid of achievements because we don't have any. All right, now we need to correct the ordering numbers. So that's now eight, that is now nine, and that is now 10. All right, so now we're gonna rename some of the labeling on this. So back in here, in the resources folder of our mod, we're gonna look for game UE underscore English. Right there. All right. Now, let's some of this. This right here refers to what will match up in this text file over here. So for resume game, copy paste that into there, find next. So let's change that to resume operation. Change that to new operation. Load operation. Save operation. Change quit to abort. And we'll 
keep options options. All right. We'll save that. Save this one. Close it. And let's go launch it. Let's see what it looks like now. So we've got new operation, load operation, options, and abort. So that works. Now we're going to change the font of the main title because as you saw it was a bunch of gibberish. So there's a bunch of places you get fonts online. There's the font. That's a pretty popular one. There's also This one, I don't know how to properly pronounce that. Behance, I'd say. If you do a search for a font-free commercial, you can usually find a bunch of fonts that are free for commercial use or personal use. So in this case, we're gonna use this one, Reknor. You gotta be careful with the licensing because you don't, you don't wanna get involved in that kind of legal garbage. It's so like, as you can see here on this site, he has it listed as it's free for commercial personal use. So, download that font. I already have it downloaded though. We got our two fonts right here that we extracted from the zip file. We're just gonna move them into the resource folder there. So it'll be with our other font files. Source prefers true type fonts, which end in .ttf. If you wanna go ahead and install them on your computer so that you can use them in something like Photoshop or paint.net or GIMP, Click install. And install. Now what I like to do, oh, not a folder. That, is I like to keep a text file called credits in here. For keeping track who gets credit for what. So in this case, font came from Alex Dale. So we'll just put a link right there to his website. That way people like our font, they can see where we got it from. Anyway, moving on. In the resource folder, we're gonna pull up clientscheme.res. Let's open up in Visual Studio as well. We wanna Place the Half Life 2 font. It's around 1630 for my notes. Let's see. Ah, right there. Client title font. So we're going to use the bold font for this. More bold. This right here, the naming, needs to match the naming in here, not the actual file name. Now to mount this, so Claire can see it, so 
go over here. Resource slash work school bold TTF. Now, if it's a common font like Arial for Dan, you don't need to include it down here. So, if it's a font that comes with Windows or Mac OS and Linux, you don't need to include it down there. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of investigating into some of these commands, but I mean, like, some of them are self, pretty self explanatory. Like, this right here is tall, which is the height, weight, do I anti alias on it? Let me see if there's anything else in here. Y resolution. scaling outline uh, this right here i believe this means do not use this one as long as it's not an osx so as long as it's not a mac don't use this font i mean use this font as long as it's not a mac use this one if it is a mac i'm going to guess that tahoma is not a font that comes with macs and let's see if there's anything else here. This is also where you can set your crosshair. The crosshair is actually a font. It's not a image, it's a true type font turns out so maybe you want to mess with that give yourself a custom crosshair for your mod and what do we got else here okay all right so save that Let's go test it out in game, make sure it looks all right. Slide over there. And go ahead and actually go to properties. Set launch options. 1920, 1080. There we go. There's our new uh, title there. The proper font. You can also change that quick game text that's in the uh, game UE English file as well. Oh, sorry about that. My leg. So now we need to add, change that background. So. Make a new folder in materials. We're going to call it console. Gonna open up BTF edit. I'll provide a link to this program in the uh, description. Go to file import. Grab that background at one.tga. DXT1, DXT5, we shouldn't need this, but always good to have it just in case. Make sure MIP maps are off. We don't want a normal map either. 7.4 is fine. Quality, high. All right, click OK. And we got this beautiful background image here of a sounds pistol on a blue background simple basic don't really care it's just going to be temporary we're going to make a much better background in the future a lot more interactive looking but for
for this tutorial, we just want a basic one. So this one, we call background one.btf. We're also going to save it again as background one widescreen btf. And then like most textures, we do not need to create a VNT for this. So take those, drop them into there, click play. And there we go. Now, as you can see, it's um, misproportioned. It stretched the uh, image. That's because I kept it at a square. I think it's 2048 by 2048. Ideally, you'd want to make it so yours scales properly with your widescreen and your 4x3 resolution. And you can look those up online. I'd probably go with the largest 16 by 9 resolution and the largest 4 by 3 respectively for each of theirs. So yeah, that's going to do it for this tutorial. That's how you make a basic background. There's a lot more you can do to this. You can change these actually into um, actual buttons and stuff. So it looks a lot nicer. You can put an actual logo up here instead of using the font. But uh, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Maybe we'll cover that in a later tutorial. Now, of course, put up a version of this finished in the description so you can compare. Anyway, that's going to do it for this time. Have fun.